What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, this is a special game, at least this was pretty special to me. I got the collector's edition of the sequel of Super Robot Ties and OG Saga Endless Frontier titled Mugen no Frontier Exceed, which means Super Robot Wars OG Saga Endless Frontier Exceed in Japanese. I know that's a lot to take in, hell of a title, but you guys know what I'm talking about. This is the sequel to Super Robot Ties and OG Saga Endless Frontier, or the collector's edition of that sequel. Now. This is a Japanese release, it's not in English, and you might think, well, John, why would you even buy this? You can't play it, you can't read or speak Japanese. Well, the thing is, is this is a collector's edition that has everything, including the game, but there's an English translated ROM out there floating on the internet, and I'm playing it right now through a GPDXD. I'm about, as recording this video, I'm about halfway through the game. I absolutely love it. Um, it, it lives up to the original. I'd say the story in the original is probably a little bit better because that's when it really hooks you. Um, if you've never played the original, you'll probably love this one, although you won't know as much about what's going on in the story. But, I mean, look at this thing. God, I am so pissed that this never came out in the U.S. But I'm, I'm telling you, the team that translated this game, it's called Artima Translations. Um, just all you have to do is Google it. You'll find the download links. Um, if you want them directly from me, hit me up on social media. Uh, more than happy to give them to you, help you out. The game is excellent. The team that translated this game did an excellent job. Uh, I'm warning you right now, I tried to play this a few different ways. Use the Drastic DS emulator through an Android device. Uh, I, again, I use a GPDXD. It works great. Absolutely love it. You can play it just like a Switch portably and on the big screen with a PS4 controller. Absolutely love it. But, God, look at the box art on this thing. And, you know, one of the main reasons I got this is because it came with a soundtrack. You know, I try to rip all that. It, it, they make some of these a little bit trickier to rip now for whatever reason. I guess there's security on the disc on some of these soundtracks. But you can, you know, rip them as WMAs and then, you know, transfer the files over to MP3s and or sometimes MP4s, make it a video file, you know, trick your computer. Here's the collector's edition, though. I mean, look at this thing. Damn. Guys, this cost me 50 bucks. Actually, this was $70 because I had to play, uh, play. I wanted to play this game for ever since I heard about it. I had to pay $20 in shipping because... With the corona and everything, for whatever reason, you know, people, especially international shipping, it's just kind of harder to ship and receive stuff internationally. So, you know, it kind of sucks. But look at this art book. Man, God, it sucks that we never got this here in the U.S. But, you know, after playing this game for about 10 hours, I saw this collector's edition. People, I got it on eBay. And the guy, uh, Japanese seller, wanted 60 or best offer. I just shot him a $50 offer, and he accepted it. Um, so I guess that's what this game, that's what I felt comfortable paying around $50, you know, $50 $60, you know, plus shipping, whatever. But uh, I see some people trying to sell this online for, you know, hundreds or a hundred and a half, two, three, you know, whatever, $100. Um, you know, there's, there's people that sell it out there for $50, $60. Bucks. So, you know, some of you might look at this and say, John, you're crazy. You spent $50 or $60 on that. You got to play the game, man. You got to play the game, play it through the Jurassic DS emulator. I'm telling you, I mean, look at that. It is a damn shame. I felt like they would have sold. The other one sold great, you know, for the little copies, the original, what little copies they did make. Um, it sold great. Look, it even comes with a little case you can put DS games in. And as a matter of fact, I have the original, the collector, the, the standard, which is the collector's edition of the original game that came out in the U.S. I took the game out of that case and stuck it inside of this DS holder right here. So... That way, if I ever want to pop it in and play it, I could access it a little bit easier. Plus, I wanted to check and make sure I hadn't accidentally sold that cart because that would absolutely break my heart. I'd have to buy another one. But, yeah, God, we should have got this. We should have got this here in the U.S. or somewhere, PAL territories, you know. Use it on the you know DS because it's region-free. God, look at that. Look at that. Look at that artwork. Man, I don't know why. Again, I don't know why this didn't come out here in the U.S. I guess they thought that we wouldn't like it we wouldn't want it i don't know i will say this this team our team of translations they worked on um translating quite a few games at least that i saw online i don't know how accurate my information is there's some download codes and stuff guys don't use them damn it i might edit that out <laughs> you probably won't even know what i'm talking about if you see it but the team that translated this our team of translations they worked on they, they, Online, again, this is just from the, the little research I did. Crimson Gem Saga, uh, Jean Dark, the retelling of uh, Joan of Arc, Tales of the World Radiant Mythology, Luminous Arc 2. Now, Tales of the World Radiant Mythology, I loved that. What if they did translations of, like, Tales of the World Radiant Mythology? What did we not get that came out in Japan? What, two, three, four, five? How many of those games came out on the, on the PSP? Man. Anyway, that's the uh, 
Super Robot Wars OG Saga Endless Frontier Limited Edition. I was super excited just to have the OST on that thing, which came in two discs and it's many more soundtracks than we had on the collector's edition of the original. But here's some gameplay footage, just a live stream I did the other day. I just want to show you guys the battle system on here because it's all about juggling your enemies in the air. And those of you that have played uh, Project Cross Zone 1 and 2, uh, you're going to be very familiar with this game and the original because you know it's a monolith soft game monolith soft right monolith soft they're a big name right now known for their fabulous work done on the xeno the xeno saga series um and xeno blade i think they worked on the xeno saga series right right if i'm wrong about that let me know in the comments but i know they worked on the xeno blade series anyway this is nothing like those games this is a turn-based rpg but it's all about turn-based timing based because you're juggling your enemies in the air and the character you're seeing on screen right now haken browning he's just like uh I have what you call a man crush on this man. He's uh he's quite the man. I mean, look at that. And look how he blasts that gun, juggling your enemies up in the air like that. I don't know. I dig it. You guys, you have to try this game out. I'm telling you, there's no reason why you shouldn't because you can get it for free. The ROMs that's floating around out there as of the recording of this video, it is, and I doubt it's going to be taken down. And the emulator, I will say the drastic DS emulator to properly use it, it did cost me five bucks. So that's what I had invested in this game, you know, plus the collector's edition. So I actually have quite a bit invested in this game, but I just, I'm real passionate about this game, this series. This, uh, this is a spinoff series of the Super Robot Wars games. Uh, and I do believe that Haken Browning and Ashen, his, uh, his android companion, they are playable characters at some point on Super Robot Wars uh, OG Moon Dwellers, that, uh, a translation in English port or whatever of that game came out on the PlayStation 4. Um, I will say this. I would absolutely love if both of these games, or even just the first one, no, fuck it, I want both of them. Both of these games came out on the Nintendo Switch or the PS4, but preferably the Switch. Could you imagine? God, that would be awesome. And I mean, they could just take the right the, trans, the uh, team of translations version and just up, you know, throw that on there. For all I care, it's great. I'm telling you, um, it is kind of you know fan servicey, but that's part of the charm of this game. And again, you know, once you play it, you'll find that out. But one of the most addictive battle systems I have ever played in an RPG. I mean, God, this game is amazing. It is a masterpiece. You know, I speak really highly of it, and I'm not shilling shit. I'm just telling you straight up, this is a good game. If you like RPGs, especially turn-based RPGs, and I'll give you an example of one. This is kind of like, if you like Valkyrie Profile, you're going to like the battle system in this game because it, it blows Valkyrie Profile out of the water. But it's that kind of like turn-based, timing-based RPG. It just takes it to the next level. Anyways, guys, I highly advise you download this game. If you Just Google it. You'll find it. But if you can't, Hit me up on social media and I'll give it to you. Till next time, guys. Peace out.